underground radio station here, and we say what we feel like saying. This is Corey and Jay of the Corey and Jay Show. The following program is brought to you in high definition. Dave Rabbit Audio. Hey, everybody. Boy, did we have a kick-ass show for you tonight. I'm talking about from Houston, Texas. That's right. A fellow Texan band, Sound Breaking Ground. And the hits just keep on coming. Damn, I love this band from Houston, Texas. Sound breaking ground. Uh, first song called This Is Hell. <laughs> Which Dave probably looks around and goes, except for when I'm with Jessica. Now, if I'm with Jessica, that's pure heaven, baby puppies. But, uh, you know, when I'm not with Jessica, uh, everything else is pure hell. Anyway, uh, boy, what a great band. Got some great songs uh, that are going to be coming up later in the show, as well as uh, I think one of the probably the better movies uh, that has come out this year, uh, taking an old time uh, uh, formula and uh, twisting it just a tad. So that's coming up, too. So we got a lot going on, uh, but before we go any further, have to say happy birthday uh, to my uh, youngest son, Jack Rabbit, who will be 24 uh, August the 20th. So uh, happy birthday, Jack. Uh, Daddy loves you. And uh, here's to many more. All right, uh, great show. Uh, got some great stuff going on. A little surprise here and there. Dave's going to really keep you guessing. 
Uh, but let's talk about the movie background of the week called The Thing. Uh, this is the second in the series of remakes of this particular franchise. The original one came out in 1951, starring at the time James Arness, who would go on to be uh, Matt Dillon in the movie, or the TV series, rather, the long-running TV series, uh, Gunsmoke. Now, this version, uh, which came out in the 25th of June, 1982, uh, starred Kurt Russell, uh, Wilfred Brimley, Keith David, Richard Dysart, and a couple of other people that uh, are pretty known actors today and back then maybe weren't so much. Uh, you know, I tell you, uh, something about John Carpenter has always intrigued me. I mean, John Carpenter's original Halloween scared the living bejesus out of everybody, and everybody and his uncle on slasher movies tried to copy that magic, never could reach the beauty and the pure adrenaline rush of the original Halloween. Uh, then he went on to uh, cast what I thought was one of the Best casting of any female lead was uh, Adrienne Barbeau uh, in her huge knockers in the movie The Fog. Uh, you know, even if the movie wasn't a great movie, it, 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 and it was, but even if it hadn't been a great movie, watching uh, Adrienne uh, bounce around, uh, uh, getting away from the creatures in the fog, uh, it was definitely worthwhile. Now, and then, you know, his third movie that really rocked me to my core and probably one of his biggest successes was the movie Starman uh, with Jeff Bridges. And to me, this was really a deep uh, inner soul kind of thing. Uh, you know, if you don't know anything about these movies, you can, you can Google John Carpenter films and you can find out more about it. And I don't want to give too much away about all this stuff, but you know, uh, Starman with Jeff Bridges was really, well, probably one of my favorites. Now, the thing, as I said before, is based on a novel. Uh, I think it's called Who Goes There? Uh, and the 1951 classic that was done, James Arness played <laughs> a giant carrot. <laughs> I don't know, folks. I don't write this stuff. This is all on the Internet. You know, uh, he plays a giant carrot. And, uh, you know, for what it was, I mean, I grew up in this era. So really, for what it was, it was really kind of a neat movie. You know, and back in the 1950s, all these movies churning out of science fiction and you know invaders from mars and all these other wonderful movies that came along about that same period of time they absolutely i think were the thing the catalyst that really got me excited about movies and, and obviously one day being a movie critic now john carpenter has been quoted many times saying that these movies tremendously influenced his life and that's when he started taking his little camera his eight millimeter camera and started doing some things and that's how his career started now interestingly enough the thing uh wasn't that big of a box office success it really started picking up momentum once it left the theaters why because it was up against at the time one of the all-time steven spielberg great movies called et uh it was 15 million to make uh ended up making 20 million only made a five million dollar profit now here's the thing i love about hollywood i love the way hollywood sits there and he says hey this worked pretty good let's remake it again and that's exactly what they're gonna do coming out october 2011 is the third remake of the thing now i won't get the critics copy dvd in to actually preview the movie and do a movie critic rendition of what i see uh until september sometime uh, but it comes out in October, and just from the initial things that I've seen on this movie, they are taking the John Carpenter version of the thing and taking it up a couple of steps, especially with special effects and the things that, that obviously have changed uh, since the original thing came out in 1982. So you're talking about over 20 years, basically, or about 20 years. All right, so anyway, that's what's going on in the background. More great music coming up, and let's start with this one. This is called Stagnant. <laughs> 